Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we'll be going over another instructive game that was between Anthony Miles and Eric. For Black, Eric is all that I could find in all the databases I looked through. So if any of you guys know the full name of Black, please comment it down below. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. So the game started off with d4, and of 6, c4, g6, knight c3, and d5, going into a Grunfeld. So knight f3 was played, bishop g7, and e3. I personally don't like this system a lot, because it kind of suffocates this dark bishop, but it's perfectly playable because it provides white with solid positions. I like this queen b3 line a lot better, but it's totally preference to be honest. e3, castles, and b4. This line is slightly unusual, slightly like offbeat, but it's perfectly playable. Bishop e2 is more popular, but b4 is playable as well. c6, bishop b2, and black's first error is b6. Now there are two things wrong with this b6 move. First of all, black intends to fee and shadow his bishop onto b7, where it will be white and granite with c6 and d5. Those two pawns will limit the bishop's scope, and therefore the bishop will be totally useless on that square. Second thing wrong with b6 is that white has plans of a queenside expansion by rushing his a-pawn down, and b6 makes it easier for him to do that and open up his a-file for the rook. So overall, this is not a very good idea, and I believe bishop g4 should be played instead to get rid of the piece after h3. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and e6, and black is totally fine here with a very solid position. So anyway, b6 was played, queen b3, and bishop b7. Like I said before, the bishop isn't very well placed on b7 because of these two pawns that limit the bishop's scope. Instead, I believe that black could have actually started a slight initiative after d takes c4, bishop takes c4, and b5. After bishop d3, play bishop e6, after queen c2, a5. And now black actually has some pretty good queenside play here. But instead, bishop b7 was played, and white decided to play c takes d5. And after c takes d5, since the pawn is no longer here on c6, he decided to play b5. Now this is a good move that takes away c6 from the knight, and e6 was played, bishop to e2, knight bd7, castles, rook e8, and a4. Again, great move, going with his queenside expansion plan and intending to push forward with a5, opening up his a-file, rook to b8, rook fc1, bishop f8, and an amazing move, bishop to a3. Now this move is great because it exchanges off white's bad bishop that was on b2 that faced d4 and didn't really have much potential because d4 always got in the way of it. And after the exchanges, look what black's left with. Black's left with this terrible bishop on b7 that faces d5 and doesn't really have much potential. So after queen e7, white traded queens and played a5. Great move, continuing with his queenside expansion plan and opening up the a file. And after rook e8, white played an amazing move, a6. Now of course he could have opened up the file with a takes b6, but what made a6 so great is that it forces black's bishop to a8. And now look at this miserable piece. It's on a8, b7 is taken, c6 is taken, and d5 is covered by his own pawn. So literally, this bishop is trapped in the corner and can't go anywhere. Of course, he could have played bishop c8, but this was equally as bad due to knight to a2. And now, white has the plan rook to c7, knight b4, and knight c6. I know I just inserted null moves into the position, but really there's no way black can stop this. So bishop to a8 was practically forced not to lose instantly on the spot. Now knight to a2, which threatens rook to c7, rook bc8. Now white plays rook takes c8, rook takes c8, and rook c1, rook takes c1, and knight takes c1. Now with these exchanges, white demonstrates that he knows exactly how to play against bad pieces, because when you exchange off more pieces, there are less pieces in the opponent's position that can pick up the slack of the bad piece. Now, white's position is basically winning, and there's really not much to do. Knight e4, knight to a2 was played, f6, king f1, bringing the king into the position, king f7, king e1, and e5, 
this move weakens this d5 pawn, which white will take advantage of by playing this bishop to d1 move, which intends to reroute this bishop to b3, where it will hit this d5 pawn. So king e6, king e2, king e7, knight to d2, knight d6, knight c3, e4, and now bishop b3. Black cannot save d5, because on king to e6, there is knight d takes e4, taking advantage of this pin that black has walked himself into. So instead of that, f5 was played, but now bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5, and knight takes d5. Black has finally gotten rid of the most miserable bishop in the world on a8, but since this came at the price of a pawn, pawns in knight endgames are often decisive. So black's totally lost here. I'll speed through the moves real quick because it's not very important. So that was it. I hope this game demonstrates to you how effective it can be to basically make the opponent's pieces useless. You saw the bishop on a8. It literally couldn't go anywhere, and that cost black the game because he was basically down a piece for the entire game. So I hope this helps you in your future games. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.